Greetings and welcome to Legacies of Wyvern, Lore of the Endowment. This will be chapter 24 of this reading. Just as Blight and I walked out of the elevator to our room's floor, I heard Serena yell at someone. Then she slammed the door. I walked around the corner and saw Serena angrily motioning over to me, where she grabbed the left side of my coat's collar. She looked directly into my eyes and yelled, you're a dumbass piece of shit, Zayek. On that note, Blight said, I'm out of here. He flew over to the front door to our room and opened it quickly, flew inside, and closed it just as fast. Not sure of what caused my wife's outburst, I asked, What do you mean? What do you mean, what do you mean? Serena continued. You know damn well that an Alakin's feelings is not something to fuck with. I grew a bit angry and said, She was coming on to me. What, you expect me to let her have her way? Yes. All you had to do was explain it to me and I would have dealt with the problem. That's stupid. No, that's dealing with a fucking problem. Serena then turned ahead for the elevators, calming her voice down a bit as she pulled me with her and said, Don't worry about it. Right now, we have an even bigger problem. Once we were in the elevator, Serena released her grip on me, then glanced over at the rose I had just as I turned to face the doors. She quickly grabbed the rose out of my hand with her right and threw it out of the elevator just before the doors could shut. I saw the rose hit the wall and break apart where it fluttered onto the floor in pieces. I made a light moan as I lowered my left hand while raising my right for a moment to adjust my glasses. Serena looked up at me and calmly asked, what? Something wrong? It's nothing, I said, trying to forget. We headed to the parking garage across the street and down to the second level, where Yojin was tuning the engine on a new two-door sedan for himself. It was also my actual super-powered two-door sedan tuner as well, fixed from after it had crashed in the race. I tried to speak with my friend, but Serena grabbed my left arm and yanked me towards my car. I had to quickly toss Galdon in the back seats, unable to even wave to my friend before being forced to leave. Yojin glanced up at us just as I was being yelled to drive off, which I noticed him laughing before I turned the corner to go up and out of the lot. Still not understanding what was wrong, I asked, What's going on, Serena? My wife sat with her arms crossed and her right leg over her left, angrily glaring out the front window as she replied, Your daughter's being a bitch right now. At the same time, she took off without a hint of where she was going. So where are we going to start looking for her? Forget Bunny. Like I said, there's a bigger problem right now. What did she do? Serena became even more irritated and said, Don't worry about it. Serena, come on. She raised her voice and said, Don't worry about it. Why are you so... My wife quickly looked over to lash out at me and yelled, She fucking called Wolf a cunt and slapped me across my face, cutting my eye open and calling me a fucking bitch. Serena then grabbed the left shoulder of my coat with her right hand, pulling me closer as she continued, There, you happy now? You know what happened. You know why I'm pissed. Now shut the fuck up, drive, and leave me the fuck alone. With that, she pushed me away and resumed pouting as she stared out into the streets. It took a few hours of driving before she was able to tell me to keep heading west, eventually reaching California. We then take a plane out to the island of Oahu, Hawaii. Don't ask how I got on with that gigantic sword on my back, I just did. They didn't even search me when I walked through the checkpoint. I asked Serena why we couldn't just fly over to the island using our own powers, but she explained that doing so would catch the attention of who we were going after. My older brother, Eilis. Damn it. In Hawaii, Serena and I used only a small hint of power to jolt towards a place called the Alamoana Beach. We figured that using a tiny portion at such a close distance wouldn't matter if my brother noticed us, because he wouldn't get away without us knowing anyways and being able to chase him down. 
When we got there, I noticed that Eilis was fighting with most of the humans. Some just simple beachgoers, and a few of them were police officials. I hurried to the scene once I spotted my brother, grabbing Galden off my back with just my right hand. Halfway near him, I swung to toss Galden at Eilis, striking the ground near his right side and spooking him a bit, causing him to jump a few feet to his left. A motion to retrieve Galden, so I yelled, What the hell's going on, I? I swung Galden over to have it hang on my back again, yet Eilis raised his left fist to strike one of the beachgoers. I quickly grabbed my brother's left arm with my right hand just before he could hit another person, then said, That's enough, damn you! I then threw his arm back, slightly shoving him away as I asked, What the fuck's wrong with you? Nothing, dear brother, Eilis calmly replied. Why? What's the matter? You, apparently. Serena ran over to stand at my left side while I looked to the man my brother was about to hit and asked, What's going on? Fucking punk ass was beating on a chick, dude. The human replied, holding his left hand under his chin. He coughed up some blood, then asked, You know this fool? I quickly turned to my brother and punched him in the left side of his face with my right fist, hard enough to knock him back onto his ass. He then sat up as I asked, What the hell, I? Eilis just stood up, brushing off some sand, and said, It wasn't in any attempt to kill her, brother. He then looked up at me with a blank expression and said, It was because I wanted you to come here. Seeing your wife here tells me that you yourself weren't the one that answered the call for help. I don't answer to humans. Now you answer to me. How long has this been going on? Eilis ignored my question and continued, Not surprising, since you don't care for human life. I became angrier, knowing that my brother was purposely trying to annoy me, and yelled, Answer me, damn it! Again, he ignored me and continued, But for someone that cares for all life, I would expect that you would help out, even with the simplest of things. I knew this treatment. Eilis did this to me and only me. He did it purposely to piss me off. Yet he had never done it after mother's death. Back then, there was no way to stop him. All I had done before to stop my brother from talking to me like this was to walk away. But that wasn't going to work this time. So I went with what I knew would stop him dead in his tracks. Something that I knew would prove him of his worth and shut him up once and for all. I quickly reached to grasp the left side of Eilis' coat's collar with my right hand, pulling him closer as I said, Looks as though true Quillens don't know when to shut their mouths. Eilis immediately went silent and furiously glared at me, nothing but the sound of the ocean being the only thing we could hear. However, his reaction to what I had said was far different than what I had expected. I figured he'd just laugh, and I had actually angered him. That was hard for me to do. Oh, and don't give me that, uh, you already made him mad back at the library, because that's bullcrap. That was a normal everyday family routine. When Eilis doesn't yell back, that's when he's really pissed. Instead of moving to strike me, Eilis responded, About an hour now. With that, I just let my brother go as he took a step back and continued, However, I wasn't constantly fighting during the time it took you to get here. What I'm sure got your first attention was the fact that I blew up a couple hospitals. You son of a- I quickly pulled back my right fist again and punched Eilis in the left side of his face as hard as I could. His head bent back and to his right side, breaking his neck, while also forcing him to take two steps away from the impact. He grabbed his head with both of his hands and forced his head back on straight with a loud crack, not so much as a single expression of pain. Though Eilis let me strike him, I knew there was a purpose to it. Nothing my elder brother did was out of random. There was always a reason. 
Afterwards, all the humans around us stepped away as my brother cracked his knuckles just by clenching his fists. Eilis just gave me a blank expression as he said, Dear brother, you don't actually think that these... He bared his teeth at me for a second, then continued, Humans are worth fighting for, do you? I knew what he really wanted to say, but with my insult towards him, he felt that I was more worthless than the humans around us. And he wasn't willing enough to speak out of hatred towards me. He knew something. You're killing innocents, I, I said. That's all I need to say. Now leave them alone. Eilis stared at me in silence for a few seconds, then said, Very well then, I'll stop. However, you must prove to me that you truly are him. I looked at my brother, confused, while he continued, The endowment. What do you mean? Fuck you, jerk. Serena barked as she took a step towards Eilis. Just run back home with your tail between your legs like you always do. Eilis glanced over at my wife and said, This doesn't concern you, bit. Before my brother could finish his sentence, he noticed me raise my right hand to grasp Galden, then twirled it around to have it face forward in my grasp as I viciously said, Choose your words wisely, Dorgon. Eilis glanced at Serena, then looked back at me and said, Very well then, Rayakin. We both hated our middle names, even more if we spoke in hatred towards one another. So we both knew the other meant business. My brother gave me a smirk as he chuckled, then said, Amazing that there is much for you to learn. He then turned away from me and continued, If you wish to find out, then you'll have to follow me. Leave her behind. Atlas channeled his energy until his dark blue aura began to flare around his body, then bent his legs down and slightly twisted his upper body to the right for a bit. He used that motion to help empower his jump, flying off high over the ocean. I quickly placed Galden onto my back again as I turned to my wife and said, Don't follow, Serena. Whatever Eilis is planning, I don't want you involved. Serena just nodded her head. Then she gave me one last hug as she said, Please return to me, Ray. I gave her a quick hug, then moved to follow my brother, channeling my energy while getting a small running start to fly off after him. I had never lost a fight, not even to Eilis. Though he was my elder brother, with him being stronger and most knowledgeable in combat, I still outmatched him in speed and quick thinking. We always reached a stalemate in our real fights, either by tiring ourselves out or by mother breaking it up. And obviously, sparring matches weren't ideal for Eilis. However, I had a feeling that this fight was going to finally change things between us. About a minute in flight, I noticed that my brother was leading me into a heavily human populated area, Tokyo, Japan. Once I realized where we were going, I sped up to catch him. Then as he turned to see me near, I quickly pulled my right fist back and struck him in the left side of his face. With that, he fell into the center of the city and was ground along the pavement for a few seconds. When I struck him, I lost my flight control as well and fell forward, slamming my right shoulder into the concrete. As I stood up, I raised my right hand to grab Galden and my left to grab Vince. I aimed my gun at Eilis and shot a blast of energy at him just as he stood, while I yelled, UNGRATEFUL MAGGOT! I then swung Galden down at my side as I lowered Vince and jolted towards my brother. Though the blast hit Eilis in his right shoulder, he was unaffected from the attack as he said, YOU'RE WEAK, RAYAKIN. With our fight brewing, a few of the humans screamed as all of them nearby took off running, trying to escape what was now our battlefield. It didn't take long for them to go a safe distance, 
yet there were a few still in the buildings watching out in terror. At least I can do a little more collateral damage now. I swung Galden down at my brother, but he dodged my attack by quickly shimmying to his left. He then grabbed my right wrist with his left hand and kicked my chest with his left foot. His hit got me to loosen my grasp on Galden and Vince, while I swung a bit to my brother's left side. He then used my arm to swing me around and throw me into the window of a building. I quickly recovered from the impact and jolted towards my brother again, with Eyeless turning to me from his right as he grabbed Galden with his left hand and threw it at me in a spinning motion. I pulled out Zane and fired two shots at the blade. The first gave the weapon a different and more wild motion, the second slowed it down from its spin. I moved myself to follow the sword's momentum as I grabbed the hilt with my left hand and used its last spin to swing down at Eyeless again only to have him dodge it by jolting back about 20 feet. I then aimed Zane up at him and yelled, Why is it you wish to fight here, Dorgon? Because, Rayakin, I want everyone to know of your existence, of all of our kind's existence. I want them to truly know what we are capable of, so that when the time comes, they shall kneel before our might. That's not what I want to do. Thinking I was distracted, Eilis grabbed a car next to his right side and threw it at me with all his might. I shot two blasts at my brother's chest, then lowered Zane and swung Galden up to slice the car in half, having each piece pass my sides by inches. My brother jolted to me and punched me in the stomach with his right fist, then spun to his left to kick the left side of my head with the top of his right foot tossing me into another building. I recovered and bolted towards him again with Galden pulled back, swinging out from my left side as fast as I could and with all my might. However, Eilis was somehow able to quickly jump up and land on the center of the blade, balancing himself on it with just his left fingers. He also continued to glare at me as he held himself upside down. While I was still in motion, Eilis used his left arm to push himself up and over to land just a foot behind me, our backs to each other. Then he quickly turned around to punch me into the lower back of my neck as my swing ended. The hit left me paralyzed for a moment, yet kept me standing, as if frozen as he continued to push it against me. You can't fool me, endowment, Eilis said. Quit playing around. I know that you are him. The endowment. Father knows it too, but he's too proud of himself to truly understand what you hold deep within. We see the ancient powers within you every time you fight, but he's too much of an idiot and thinks it'll mean nothing after he gains what he wants. My brother then removed his fist from me as he calmly took a step back, allowing me to try and recover from his attack as he continued. We tried to see if you would forget your naturally good-hearted ways and join us in the rise to conquer this entire galaxy. But you were too damn stubborn. As were your worthless brothers who followed after you. I roared as I turned to my right, trying to strike Eilis down with Galden. However, he was able to dodge my attack again by first jolting back, then jumping up onto the blade. Oddly enough, he stood on Galden with both his feet, but just as he landed on the sword, I aimed Zane up and shot one blast into my brother's head, then ten quick shots into his torso. I let go of Galden and channeled my energy into my left hand to call forth Vince, then aimed it up at my brother too and fired thirty more quick blasts from each pistol, forcing Eilis to take about five strides back. While he recovered from the shots, I placed both pistols back into their holsters then grabbed Galden with my right and jolted towards Eilis as I pulled the blade back at my right side. As I swung the broadsword, I yelled, They were your brothers too! Just then, Eilis did something that I thought was absolutely impossible. He used Dark Vanish. He did it just before Galden could strike him. My swing missed and accidentally pulled myself forward a couple steps from the amount of force I used. Then I raised Galden in a defensive position in front of me. I had the tip of the blade tilted 
to be aimed down and slightly away from me, while I had my left elbow raised over my head and my right arm near my chest as my hands held Galden's hilt close to my face. In the stance, I slowly and cautiously walked around looking for my brother. Having walked around in a small area, I started to fear for my life as I said, no, he can use it too. I stopped moving for a second, then Eyeless appeared right in front of me and back kicked Galden out of my hands with his left foot. He quickly placed his foot down and swung his right fist up at me, yet didn't strike me with it. At the same time, a black two-sided blade sprung out from the back top part of his wrist. Eyeless had the tip just barely press against the top left side of my neck, though I don't see why when it wasn't going to stop me. The only thing that I was concerned about was of the dark vanish he used. The weapon on his wrist was about a foot and a half long and was a quarter inch thick, with the blade itself being the same width as his arm and tapered towards the tip. This blade was called a piercer, the first and most simple weapon only used by Kexons and Kexins. As to its name, the tip was so sharp it could pierce through anything except boulder and metal. However, the blade itself wasn't very sharp when it came to simply cutting things. It was the only body-built weapon we could use, if nothing else, and it would regenerate like any normal body part if broken. It was as strong as steel and was so light that it almost felt like it wasn't even there. But if it broke, it took longer to fix than normal body parts. Just as Eilis pushed his blade against my neck, puncturing it slightly, he said, What's the matter, Rayakin? I thought by now you would have known that I possessed the powers of darkness. How else would I have been able to surpass you in your most basic form? Hatefully gazing at my elder brother, I replied, You've never surpassed me, Eilis. Not in exercises, my dear little brother. That would have been too easy. However, there's more to it than that. Eilis slowly moved his blade from my neck and lowered it, retracting it back into his arm. He then removed his coat to reveal three small black bone-like spikes on his right arm, one at his shoulder, one at his elbow, and one in between. He also had revealed a black foxtail that was in the back of his pants. He let it flick out and start to wag on its own as if agitated. When I just let go of his coat, he raised both of his hands to the back of his head. He pulled away his black hairband to let his hair hang freely, which revealed two large fox ears that were pressed and hidden under his hair. He then moved his hands to the sides of his head where his normal ears were and ripped them away his skin healing quickly to close up as he used his powers to set fire to the pieces he had. Once the unnecessary parts were ashes, Eilis fixed his hairband before lowering his arms, continuing to speak with a darker, two-toned voice as he said, Far more to it than that. This concludes the reading of chapter 24. Thank you all for watching and listening. If you like what you've seen and heard, there will be a link to my physical works in the description below. With that being said, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you again next week, reading chapter 25.